Always wear safety goggles and appropriate safety gear when demounting or mounting tires. Remove the valve core with a Kentool T16P and completely deflate the tire. Run a wire down the valve stem to make sure it is not plugged. Follow OSHA regulations. Using a T26B slide impact bead breaker, place the bead breaking foot between the tire and rim flange and use the tool as demonstrated. Reposition the tool and repeat if necessary. To avoid extra work, break the bead on the back side of the rim first. Lubricate the bead and rim surfaces with Bead Ease Tire Lubricant after breaking the first bead. Turn the assembly over and repeat the bead breaking and lubricating process. Starting at the valve stem, insert two T45A2000 or T45A type tubeless tire irons with the stop facing toward the rim flange on either side of the valve stem, approximately six inches apart. Step through the wheel and step on the tire opposite the valve stem to direct the top bead into the wheel well. Push the tire irons down to lift the tire bead over the flange as shown. Remove one tire iron and insert the curved end between the bead and the rim where the bead is beginning to come over the rim. Be sure the knob is facing the tire. Proper tool location reduces the amount of effort to insert the tool. To help avoid bead damage, make sure the tip on the curved end of the tubeless tire iron is below the bead toe by pressing down on the tire iron as you pull toward the center of the wheel. Remove the second tire iron and continue this procedure, alternating irons, until the top bead is completely free of the rim. Lift the tire assembly into a vertical position and insert the straight end of the T45A tire iron between the tire bead and the back rim flange until the tip hooks over the back side of the rim flange. Holding the tire iron as shown, lower the tire assembly while pulling up on the tire iron. A rocking or bouncing action may be necessary to pry the rim out of the assembly in some cases. Inspect the rim, valve stem, and tire beads for any damage before lubricating with bead ease. After thoroughly inspecting the rim and valve stem, lubricate the rim surface, especially the wheel well. When lubricating the beads, do not let any excess lubricant puddle inside the tire. Position the tire opposite the valve stem with the narrow side of the rim facing up and install the bottom bead. Use a T45A type tire iron to pry the bead over the rim flange if necessary. Do not use a hammer to strike the tire or rim during the mounting process. Stand opposite the valve stem and pry the top bead over the rim flange with the curved end of the tubeless tire iron. As shown, taking small bites, repeat this procedure until the top bead is free from the rim flange. For more information regarding service and inspection procedures for single-piece rims, consult the manufacturer or supplier. Always wear safety goggles when doing any inflation of a tire assembly. Follow OSHA regulations. All steel radial tires returning to service must be inspected using the procedures established by RMA Tire Information Service Bulletin Volume 33, number two. After the tire and wheel have been thoroughly inspected and mounted, seat the beads. Make sure the tire is concentrically seated on the rim by checking the distance between the rim flange edge and the molded ribs on the sidewall of the tire. Do not exceed five PSI inflation pressure outside the Ken Tool inflation cage to seat the beads. The maximum variation in the distance between the rim flange edge and the molded ribs on the sidewall is two thirty seconds of an inch at any point on the tire. With the valve core still removed, place the tire and wheel assembly into a Ken Tool inflation cage. Today's tire inflation is being performed in a T101 portable inflation cage. Making sure the valve stem is not positioned behind a bar and is easily accessible, install a clip-on air chuck. After the tire is inflated, the valve core will have to be installed while the tire is still in the cage. By positioning the tire correctly, 
You will not put any part of your body between the sidewall of the tire and the bars of the inflation cage when handling the air chuck. All tire inflation cages must conform to OSHA standard 29 CFR 1910.177. Tubeless tires cannot be inflated when any flat or solid surface is in the trajectory. Read the warning label on the cage before inflating the tire. If there is not a warning label, contact Kentool for free labels. With the valve core removed, begin inflating the tire. All tire inflation devices must include a clip-on air chuck and an inline valve with a pressure gauge or a presetable pressure regulator. A sufficient length of hose to allow the technician to stand outside the trajectory is also required by OSHA. While remaining outside the trajectory zone, inflate the tire to 20 PSI and then check the tire beads for proper seating. Do not put any part of your body between the sidewall of the tire and the bars of the inflation cage. Never inflate beyond 40 PSI to seat the tire beads. If the beads are not seated at 40 PSI, stop. Deflate and determine the problem. Using the RMA inspection procedures for all tires returning to service, look for distortions, undulations, ripples, and or bulges. Listen for any popping sound. If any of these conditions are present, the tire should be deflated immediately, made unusable, and scrapped. Again, remain outside the trajectory zone during the inflation process. If none of these conditions are present, with the valve core still removed, inflate the tire to 20 PSI over the recommended operating pressure. If any signs of a zipper rupture appear, immediately stop inflation and deflate the tire. Any steel radial tire suspected of having been underinflated and or overloaded must remain in the inflation cage at 20 PSI over operating pressure for 20 minutes. If any signs of a zipper rupture are present, the tire should be made unusable and scrapped. If none of the signs are present and the beads are properly seated, reduce the inflation pressure to the recommended operating pressure and install the valve core before removing the tire and wheel assembly from the inflation cage. Install a self-sealing metal valve cap and return the tire to service. Completely deflate the tire by removing the valve core using the Kentool T16P and run a wire down the valve stem to make sure it is not plugged. Using a TG11E or any Kentool handled bead breaking wedge, position the wedge against the rim flange. Force the TG11E wedge between the rim and the sidewall of the tire by striking the head of the tool with a soft faced hammer until the wedge makes contact with the rim base. Lift the handle to pry the bead away from the rim. Reposition the wedge and repeat the process until the entire bead is completely free from the side ring. Use the appropriate Ken tool lock ring tool to pry apart the side ring at the split and insert the tapered end of the lock ring tool at the notch to pry the side ring out of the rim gutter. Two lock ring tools are usually required to pry out the side ring. Use the lock ring tools to pry around the tire until the side ring is free from the rim gutter. Do not strike the side ring with a hammer or a lock ring tool. Lubricate the top bead using Kentool beadies. Install the T115 tire stand with the valve positioned between the feet. Position the feet firmly against the inside of the rim. Tighten the lever on the tire stand by hand. Do not over tighten. Make sure the bead is well lubricated. Use your legs to lift the assembly and turn it over. Unseat the bottom bead using a TG11E or any Kentool handled bead breaking wedge and a rubber mallet or any Kentool dead blow hammer. Reposition the wedge and repeat the process until the tire is completely free from the rim base. Remove the flap and tube from the tire. Make sure the proper tube and flap are being used for the size and type of tire being mounted. Radial tires should have radial flaps and tube. All new tires should be mounted with new tubes and flaps. 
Never use oversized or undersized tubes or flaps in any tire. Before installing the tube, vacuum the inside of the tire to remove any debris or foreign material. With the valve core removed, install the tube in the tire and use a clip-on chuck with an inflating device that conforms to OSHA standards to partially inflate the tube. Insert the valve stem through the valve stem hole and install the flap. Some tire manufacturers recommend lubricating the tube before installing the flap. Check with your supplier. Locate the identification stamp on the rim base. Locate the identification stamp on the side ring. Never use a rim part that you cannot identify from the stamp. Using the OSHA matching chart, match the markings found on the rim base with those shown in the rim base column. Continue reading the same line across the chart to find the proper markings for the matching side ring. Never assemble mismatched rim parts. If the identification stamps on the parts do not match, stop. Select the correct matching serviceable replacement parts from the stock or obtain them from a rim supplier. Clean the rim gutter with a Kentool T15 wire brush to remove any rust or debris. Follow the rim manufacturer's guidelines for inspecting the rim base. Use a wire brush to clean the side ring. Follow the rim manufacturer's guidelines for inspecting the side ring. Check the condition of the rim and side ring to make sure they meet manufacturer's guidelines for use. If any component is worn, bent, or damaged, it should be destroyed and not used. Lubricate the rim base using Kentool beadies or an approved rubber lubricant. Lubricate the tire beads and the flap with Kentool beadies or an approved rubber lubricant. Center the valve stem in the valve slot and lift the tire at the valve stem while pushing down opposite the valve stem. If the flap becomes dislodged, lift up on the tire and push the flap into position, making sure it is not creased. Do not use a hammer to force the tire onto the rim. Place the end of the side ring without the notch into the rim gutter and walk the side ring into place. The rubber head of a TG35 or any Kentool rubber tire mallet or dead blow hammer can also be used to install the side ring. Check to ensure the side ring is fully seated in the rim gutter. Do not use a steel-faced hammer, heat, or any other device to force the rim components together. If they do not fit, remove and inspect the components and rim gutter for damage, rust, or other foreign material. Using a clip-on air chuck and an inflating device that conforms to OSHA standards, inflate the tire with the valve core removed to 3 PSI in order to concentrically seat the bead. Do not attempt to correct the seating of the side ring by hammering, striking, or forcing the components while the tire is pressurized. If the components are not properly seated, deflate and demount the tire. Reinspect the components before reassembly and replace them if necessary. Always wear safety goggles and hearing protection when inflating multi-piece tube type tires. Follow the inspection procedures outlined by RMA Tire Information Service Bulletin, Volume 3, Number 2, OSHA Regulations When Inflating Steel Radial Tube Type Tires on Multi-Piece Rims. With the valve core removed, install a clip-on air chuck with an inline valve or presetable pressure regulator and a sufficient length of hose to allow the technician to stand outside the trajectory. Before inflating the tire, make sure the side ring is properly seated. Do not exceed 5 PSI inflation pressure outside the inflation cage to seat the beads. Make sure the tire is concentrically seated on the rim by checking the distance between the rim flange edge and the molded ribs on the sidewall of the tire. The maximum variation in the distance between the rim flange edge and the molded ribs on the sidewall is 2 30 seconds of an inch at any point on the tire. With the valve core still removed, place the tire and wheel assembly into an inflation cage. Here we are using the Kentool T105 inflation cage. Install a clip-on air chuck 
making sure the valve stem is not positioned behind a bar and is easily accessible. All Ken Tool tire inflation cages are designed to meet OSHA standard 29 CFR 1910.177. Warning label stickers notifying the technician of potential hazards while inflating tires should be present on the cage. If they are not, contact Ken Tool for free inflation cage label. With the valve core removed, begin inflating the tire. All tire inflation devices must include a clip-on air chuck and an inline valve with a pressure gauge or a pre-settable pressure regulator. A sufficient length of hose to allow the technician to stand outside the trajectory is also required by OSHA. While remaining outside the trajectory, inflate the tire to 20 PSI and then check the tire beads for proper seating. Do not put any part of your body between the sidewall of the tire and the bars of the inflation cage. Never inflate beyond 40 PSI to seat the tire beads. If the beads are not seated at 40 PSI, stop. Deflate and determine the problem. Inflate the tire to the recommended operating pressure without the valve core installed, and then completely deflate the tire to prevent wrinkles in the tube. Insert the valve core and reinflate the tire to the recommended operating pressure. Visually inspect the tire rim assembly for improper seating of the side ring, bead, or any unusual conditions in the tire or rim. Always keep hands and all body parts outside of the cage and trajectory zone during the inflation and inspection process. Install a self-sealing metal valve cap and return the tire to service. Never hammer on a tire rim assembly to correct a problem while the tire contains inflation pressure. Do not attempt to seat any part by hammering, striking, or prying while the tire contains any inflation pressure. If the parts are not seated properly, deflate the tire and correct the problem before returning the tire to service.